Thank you to Kenneth Copeland Ministries for sowing the airtime for this broadcast. There's enough power in every sick room and in every hospital room to raise up that sick one that may be describing you. Yes, you yes. may be in a sick room. Yep. You may be in a hospital room. And I want to remind you, power is present. That power is there to do a work. Believe in what's present, not try to get something, but notice that he's already made it yours. It's present right where you're at. Say, I receive that power. I receive, I receive that power. I receive it right now. I receive it right From now. From the top of my head. From the top of my to head. the soles of my feet. The soles of my feet. Welcome. We're so glad you're joining us today for Jesus the Healer. We invite you to get your Bible, get a notepad, get something you can take notes on and follow along with us because we're expecting God to give you answers. Amen. And so it's a joy to be able to come to you. And we are bringing again today the same series we've been in on in a, well, my goodness, a long time now. Uh, but that's okay because there's so much to it and we want to, we want to do justice to it. Um, we've been teaching out of my book, The Price of the Double Portion Anointing. And um, we're going to carry on. Uh, today with that, we won't get finished today. Just a warning. We won't get finished today. <laughs> but um, this book came out of an experience that I had when I was in St. Petersburg, Russia. And Jesus came into my hotel room and spoke to me one night. And you say, well, did you see him? No, it was by word of knowledge. I knew where he was at and just took notes on what he said. And so it was for me, it's for the body of Christ. And so um, <clears throat> I want, in fact, today what we're going to get into will kind of, um, it will kind of go a little bit further on the terminology, double portion anointing, because we don't want to imply that everyone will operate under a double portion anointing. But everyone does have an anointing that abides within. Every believer has that. And um, if we will become skillful with that anointing, it can flow in a great measure through our lives. Amen. Um, one of the things that Jesus said to me while I was there, uh, he said, the anointing, the double portion anointing is available to those who are faithful to another man. Now notice that. The double portion anointing. Now, <clears throat> let me again restate some things I've said before. That anointing that abides within is in every believer. Mm -hmm. But there is an anointing that comes upon mm -hmm. that is for those who are separated under the fivefold gift ministries. Apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, or teacher. That anointing that comes upon is not for their everyday personal life. It is for them to minister to the people. The anointing that abides within the believer and ministers, that's what they draw on for their daily life. Yes. Amen. Yes. So ministers need to understand this anointing that comes upon is not for our personal life. Mm -hmm. It is the anointing that abides within. Just like every other believer, we have to develop skill toward that anointing within. Yes. <clears throat> but with this double portion anointing, um, not even every minister would operate under a double portion anointing. But I want you to see a truth that those who serve faithfully another man, they'll end up with more than they had. Yes. Amen. Amen. And that's true for everyone. Yes. Everyone in the body of Christ, you become a servant, God will trust you with more. Yes. That's just all there is to it. Yes. He'll trust you with more revelation, trust you with uh, more ministering to people. You know, there's all kinds of things that God will trust you in when you're faithful to just be, be a servant. What's it mean? Be a blessing. I, this is something, Dad Hagen, who is our spiritual father, I love something. He, he lived simply. He kept things simple with the ministry. And I love this simple prayer that he would pray when he said, every day when I get up, I'd say, to God, make me a blessing today. And how many layers there is to that. Just make me a blessing today. And that, it, it, what's that do? It turns you this direction towards the people and not just this direction toward yourself. And so uh, that anointing that 
is within us makes us a greater blessing. The anointing that comes upon ministers makes us a greater blessing. So we want to be faithful with that anointing. How do we do that? Well, one of the best ways, just be a servant. Realize that it's a blessing to be a servant to others. Amen. Amen. Now, one of the things that Jesus said, let me say it again, that he said that night, the double portion anointing is available to those who are faithful to serve another man as Elisha was to Elijah. And this anointing, this double portion anointing, you can't just get in a prayer line and say, I want a double portion of what's on you. It doesn't come that way. You can't just lay hands on someone and say, I give you a double portion. It comes through serving. It's a lifestyle flow. <clears throat> Meaning this, there's a faithfulness involved in this. Amen. 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 So uh, let, let, let's tr- backtrack a little bit. How, do, how did Elijah walk in such a strong anointing? Well, He, the anointing that's up on a minister that comes upon us, that anointing can be increased by faithfulness, consecration, and diligence in the word of God in prayer. That's how that anointing upon can be increased. But with someone with Elisha, how God told him to serve Elijah, then Elisha had to be faithful with what he was anointed to do, but then he could also receive Elijah's mantle as he was faithfully serving him. Amen. So um, a double portion anointing can only come upon a man who served another man of God at the exit of the first man. When Elijah left the earth, you'll remember the story, his mantle, remember a chariot of fire came by faith. He stepped on that thing and his mantle dropped and Elisha picked it up. And remember when um, Elijah knew it was time for his departure. And he said, ask what you want me to do for you before I go. He says, I want to, Elisha said, I want a double portion of the anointing that's upon you. Remember what Elijah said. He said, if you see me when I go, he said, then it'll be granted. If you don't, it won't. In other words, if you leave prematurely, if you don't see it through to the end, if you don't stay where you're supposed to stay, If you don't stay where God told you to stay, then Elijah was telling him, then you won't receive that double portion only. Meaning he could have stayed with him the majority of the time in the last moments of his last weeks, days, depart from him, he wouldn't have gotten it. Because you're there till, you're, you're there till the finish. Yes. Amen. Amen. So what's this mean? God turns us into finishers. Yes. We're not just jumping from one thing to the next, from one from one, if I could say this, from one pastor to the next, we're not just jumping around. We're, we're, we're where God told us to be and only God can redirect us. I said only God can redirect us. Amen. So we see that Elisha was, was faithful to Elijah. And what that did is he came into a knowledge and a skill that he, he would not have, have, have walked into on his own. I mean, uh, spiritual things, it's not the best to be (laughs) self-taught. You need someone to teach you. That's why God wants to give every, he will give every sheep a pastor. Why? So that we're not living this life self-taught, but we come under the skill of, of, of who God has joined us to. That pastor that God tells us to, to sit under and to serve under. Amen. And what that's going to do, that's going to help our advancement in our spiritual life because we're going to go faster. We're going to go further with having right instruction, right teaching. Amen. Now, one thing we see this is that those who advance spiritually in their spiritual walk, in their fellowship with God, um, they're faithful to serve. They are, they value serving. Look at this. Joshua served Moses. Samuel served Eli. Elisha served Elijah. Timothy served Paul. What's, what do we see? God will give us someone to speak into our life. What's that do for us? It gives us the privilege of being a student, of listening, of being teachable. Amen. 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 Um, And um, during seasons 
of sitting under someone. We're not there to do our own thing. We're there to help our pastor fulfill the vision that God's given him. Yes. Amen. Yes. We're there to be an assist to that local church, that body. We're there to serve that vision. I don't, um, you know, I know this. God gives a pastor a vision for that local church. When you jo- when God tells you to join to a local church, he's telling you to join to that vision. So it's our privilege to serve that vision, not carry our own into that and ask the pastor to serve our vision. No, we're there to take on the vision that God's given that local church family. Amen. And before these men, when Joshua served Moses, Joshua wasn't there to do his own thing. He was there to help Moses carry out what was in his heart. Um, Samuel wasn't there to do his own thing. He was there to serve Eli. Same thing with Elisha. He wasn't trying to get his own way. He was there to serve Elijah. He wasn't there to criticize him, tell him how he's doing it wrong, how he ought to do better. No, he just served him. Yes. Same thing with Timothy serving Paul. They, God was able to promote them because they served well yes. and they served faithfully. They stayed to the finish. Yes. Amen. Amen. So before these men were known as men of great faith, they were, no, they were known to faithfully serve. If you want to have great faith, faithfully serve. Where did God tell you to be? Faithfully serve. Amen. Um, These men, they didn't just love God. They loved the man they served too. They honored the man they served. You know, we love God first, but because we love him, we love the people God puts in our life also. We're not just saying, oh, I just want, I want a ministry like them or I want anointing like them. No, I want, I love, I love the person. I want to help them in what they're called to. Now, wives, let me tell you uh, something that God said to me early on when I married my husband. One of the things he said to me, he said, you see to it. Now, see, let me back up a little bit. I knew I was called to the fivefold ministry. Um, so, but I wasn't in the, I didn't start out there by any means. I served in my local church for as long as I can remember. And then when I married my husband, I just came in and I served in the offices. And then I, I served in different departments. I helped develop different departments. Then I became the crew, the, um, the administrator. And then I began to preach. Then I traveled with my husband. I was not there to do my own thing. I was there to help what God had put in his heart. And God said this to me early on in our marriage. He said, you do everything you can to see to it that your husband fulfills what he's called to. And I'll see to it that you fulfill what you're called to. Now, what was he saying? Don't be, don't be serving him with the idea of your own ministry in mind. And I, I wasn't, I just, I'm just here to help him. And because I was faithful to serve him and I put that first, I wasn't out trying to have my own thing separate from him. Amen. Anything that I did was an extension of what my husband had me to do. As I pastored, I was an extension of that local church was an extension of his ministry, fulfilling what was in my husband's heart. Amen. It didn't originate with me. It originated with God spoke that to my husband and I was just there serving. Now, I didn't understand the full impact of those words. When God said to me, you do everything you can to see to it that your husband fulfills his ministry. In other words, assist him. Mm -hmm. And he said, then I'll see to it that you fulfill yours. I noticed then he didn't say anybody else would help me but him. He said, I'll see to it that you fulfill your ministry. What did he know? He knew my husband wouldn't always be here when I was carrying on the ministry. And God would, God would be the one I would. He, I have others that help me. Don't misunderstand me. But because I faithfully served, then I could reap the divine help. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. So what do we see? These men were not serving, trying to get their own. Mm-hmm. Elisha wasn't trying to get his own. Uh, Joshua wasn't trying to get his own. Their motives were just to help their man of God. Every believer needs somebody they're helping. Their local church, their pastor. Every minister primarily is going to have another minister more seasoned speaking into their life. We all need that. I said we all need that. Um, They loved the man. 
They valued the man they served. They prized and they honored the man. They never dishonored the man of God. This is all part of um, being faithful. Amen. It's not just about a ministry. They They didn't have their own ministries in mind. They had the man they were serving in mind. That's how Jesus lived. Amen. He came to serve. It was not about getting others to, ign- to do something for him. He came strictly for one thing, to serve all men. Amen. So they used all their energies in helping another man succeed and fulfill their vision. Thereby, they received into their own life the outcome or the harvest on their faithfulness. No wonder Joshua could lead the people in to the promised land because he was so faithful to help his man of God that he reaped a harvest of entering that that promised land through his serving. Amen. Amen. In serving another, we become their student. Amen. We receive the instruction. We receive the training, the divine impartations that's going to help us fulfill what God's called us to do. Every single believer is called to something. And our pastors help equip us for that. But those who serve the pastor best are in a position to receive the most. Amen. If someone serves from afar, serving minimally, they're not they only show up randomly in their local church. They're going, it's going to be limited what they can receive from their That's pastor. Right. But those who work closely, if I could say that, I'm not talking about being best friends and buddies. I'm not talking about that. Uh, I'm talking about being, being there faithful, that that pastor can count on them. There's going to be a divine exchange that happens. That as you serve, there comes a harvest back into your life that will help you fulfill what God's called you to do. And it's not, like I said, it's not the pastor's job to fulfill your vision that's in your heart. But as you serve faithfully that pastor, there you'll be equipped to walk out God's plan for your life. Amen. 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 So these men that served, they grew to have great faith as they took the path of serving. Amen. Now Luke chapter 16 and verse 12, Jesus made this statement. And in making... Really, it's a question, but he's making a statement in a question. Luke 16 and verse 12 says this, And if you have not been faithful in that which is another man's, who will give you that which is your own? So the more faithful we are to another man, it boomerangs back into our life. Amen. If we're not faithful, there's nothing to boomerang back into our life. Um, anyway, it's an honor to serve. I said, it's an honor to serve. There are leadership principles that the word shows, but the leadership principles begin with serving. Leadership principles begin with serving. Those who serve best will develop the right mindset if they ever are in a leading position. And I'm not talking about being pastor. Their pastors need help in, in, in leading the, the children's ministry, the youth ministry, other arms of that local church. They have leaders to assist them. And so where is the man of God going to find someone who will serve well or, or lead well, someone who serves well? That's where he's going to go first. I love what my husband used to say. He said, when God is looking for someone for a a job, he he goes to find, where's the man that's serving? Amen. 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 It's not faithful for us to serve a man with our own in view. Meaning our motive is divided. We're only serving so we can get somewhere. No, I'm serving because I want to be a blessing. I want to be a help. This is part of being faithful with that anointing that abides within you. You're anointed to be a blessing with that anointing to someone. Amen. And uh, it's just a blessing to serve. Amen. It's a mistake to go through the motions of serving when our motive is with our own in view. Amen. You say, well, no, for me, I knew that at some point um, I would be in the full-time ministry. I knew that. But I wasn't serving my husband just saying, can't wait till I get mine. 
That, that was not in my thought process. I would not allow that in my thought process. Why? I'm going to be wholehearted in the season I am now. The season I am now calls for wholeheartedness, undivided attention. And my motive is to help be, is to help who God has put me with. And I'm going to serve faithfully there. I'm going to be wholehearted. But if I'm, if I'm serving with my eye on the future, um, I might not be as wholehearted. Amen. Amen. We don't, we don't just love what we can gain from a man. We love the man we're serving. We love the, what God's entrusted to them and that we get to be a part of that. Amen. To serve, you have to lose sight of yourself. You just have to. And that's exactly what Jesus did when he came and served. He lost sight of himself. As we lose sight of ourselves, God can trust us with more because he knows we won't be doing it with us in mind. Amen. Many go a lifetime serving another man. And what a high honor that is. I don't serve so I can get my own. I don't do that. I've, that's not ever been my intent. Um, I serve, I served my husband, not so I could one day take over. I had no idea I would be in the position I'm in now, Mm -hmm. but I never served with the hopes that I would be leading the ministry. That was never my intent. So we have to realize sometimes God calls us somewhere and we serve our whole life Mm -hmm. under someone without ever being the, the lead position. What an honor. It is not a less than position to serve the rest of our life. Can I tell you this? The Holy Spirit is called the helper. It is a position worthy of the Godhead. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. And one, one member of that Godhead, is, he's, not, he's not leading. He's serving. He serves, 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 serves. Serving is worthy of the Godhead. What an elevated flow that brings to the, to the position of serving. What an honor. Amen. And if God only ever had me to serve someone, my whole, that'd be fine with me. I just want to be obedient to the plan. Can I tell you this? Our health is connected to fulfilling the plan. Our health is not connected to leading. Our health is connected to fulfilling the plan. I don't try to get myself to the top rung of the ladder, so to speak, and step over others to get there. I just want to be faithful to serve and take the path God ordained and authored for me. Amen. That's where you'll be happiest. That's where your health will flourish. That's where your finances will flourish. That's where your marriage and your home will flourish. All will flourish when we're fulfilling the plan of God. And I love what Brother Copeland said. He said, the will of God is your wealthy place. He's not just talking about finances there. It includes finances. But he's saying every single arena of my life will be enriched when I'm just serving where God told me to serve. And even, can I say this, even those who occupy a five-fold ministry, a visible position, we're still serving God. We're not the head of this thing. Amen. Jesus is the head of the body. The head uh, is served by every member in the body. We're servants. Amen. Amen. We're servants. And God is wanting us to see that these faithful men, the Joshua's, the Timothy's, the Elisha's, the Samuel's, they, they were known for their serving before they were ever known as leading anything. Amen. Amen. That's a man God can promote. Amen. Amen. God can promote us as we're faithful. Amen. Amen. Just be faithful. Just be faithful. Amen. It's a blessing to just be where God told us to be. Now, if we're not where God told us to be, it will hinder how we will, um, the flow of that anointing that abides within, it won't flow as richly as it ought if we're out of place. I mean, because it's when we're where God told us to be, things can flow unhindered in our life, including that anointing that abides within. Amen. And so just being in the will of God, what an honor. Amen. And whatever that is, 
Let God define it. The genius of heaven is so much greater than anything we could formulate for ourselves. Amen. And that's where the blessing is, is in obeying what the genius of heaven authored for us. Well, we're teaching out of my book, The Price of the Double Portion Anointing. We invite you to get hold of your copy. You can go to JesusTheHealer.org and you can purchase your copy there. And we say this, you might want to buy it for somebody else because uh, some, some others may not be able to hear what you're hearing when you watch this broadcast, but it'll be a blessing to them. And so we invite you, um, get your own copy, follow along with us because there's so much in this. You can't get it with one hearing. Amen. Amen. And until next time, remember this, Jesus is the healer. God bless you. To watch or listen to today's message and other messages by Nancy Dufresne, visit DufresneMinistries.org. In this book, The Price of the Double Portion Anointing, Nancy Dufresne gives clarity on how we are to walk successfully in this era. It instructs those in the ministry, but also brings instruction to every believer in helping them to fulfill the will of God for their lives. Order this book now at DufresneMinistries.org. We invite you to join us for our annual camp meeting here at World Harvest Church in Marietta, California, June 3rd through the 7th. For more information and to register, please visit our website at DufresneMinistries.org. In Nancy Dufresne's book, A Supernatural Prayer Life, you will learn how prayer moves the plan of God forward. As we take time to pray in the Spirit, clarity of His plan for our lives comes. Order this book now at DufresneMinistries.org. Jesus called healing the children's bread. Nancy Dufresne's book, Daily Healing Bread from God's Table, contains daily portions of healing bread for you to feast on and meditate on in your thought life throughout the day. Order this book now at DufresneMinistries.org. I want to make available to you our 10-part series on how to keep your healing. Know this, that everything you receive from God, the devil is busy trying to steal from you. So you have to know how to hold fast to what God has made yours. We invite you to get hold of your copy today. Go to our website at JesusTheHealer.org and you can purchase your copy there. If you have received a healing or have any other testimony to share with us as a result of this broadcast, we would love to hear about it. Please call us, write us, or contact us through our website. We trust you've enjoyed this message. Visit us at DufresneMinistries.org to learn of our upcoming meetings, share your testimony, submit a prayer request, or visit our online store. Thank you to the friends and partners of Dufresne Ministries for making this production possible. Nancy Dufresne is the president of World Harvest Bible Training Center in Marietta, California. This is a word and spirit Bible school where you will receive impartations and revelations. So whether you're called to the five-fold ministry or want to bring a greater supply to your local church, this could be the school for you. We're now accepting applications. Go to whbtc.org for more information.